from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar! Johnny Dollar! Yeah, I'm Johnny Dollar. There's a phone call for you in the office, Mr. Dollar. But my plane's about to take off. He said it's very urgent, sir. Well, it better be. Then I'll get back to Hartford. Hey, look, my name's Dollar. I understand you have a... Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. Todd Swam, Johnny, at the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, Todd, look, I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to say goodbye to you, and I appreciate all your Johnny. help. Johnny. Like your city, too. Nice people, good fishing. But I barely had time to make my plane reservation, pack my Johnny, stuff. Johnny, and... you've got to cancel your reservation. Cancel? My plane's already to leave. Earl Poorman is on his way to the airport now to pick you up and bring you back here. Look, we proved that the accident in that rocket fuel laboratory was an accident. I know. The Dr. Allworth's technician, that Leon Stalkov, is not a I Russian know. spy. So the company will pay for the damage, and that's that. Will the company also pay a claim on Leon Salkoff? Don't see why not. Now, look, i got to catch my... What? Salkoff is dead? Johnny, it looks like murder. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company, Sarasota, Florida. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Salkoff sequel matter. Expense account item one, three dollars, no show penalty for canceling the flight back to Hartford. By the time I hung up the phone on Todd Swam, Earl Poorman had pulled a shiny new cat into the airport parking lot, and we took off. I'm glad Todd caught you before you climbed aboard that plane, Johnny. Earl, he said that Leon Salkoff had been murdered. That's what it looks like. Well, what happened? Actually, he's just disappeared. But under circumstances that make it look like he's been murdered. Any idea who? Johnny... You know as well as I do that he was pretty deep in subversive activities during the last war. Yeah, but he's been given a clean slate, at least so far as our country is concerned. Right. But then, wait a minute. If some of his old pals, and we know there are plenty of them in this country, working for the other side. Right. If they know he's working for us, the first thing they'd do for the sake of their great and glorious cause would be to eliminate one Leon Salkov. Yeah, or at the very least persuade him, and I mean torture him, into telling the formula of the stuff he's helped Dr. Alworth develop. Exactly. Where and how did it happen? Well, you'll have to get the details from Todd Swam. Us common people aren't even allowed to know where Alworth's lab is hidden away, you know. That's why I'm taking you to see Todd. Then drive on. Todd was waiting for us at the Chamber of Commerce building. He thanked Earl for dragging me in from the airport. Earl left, then Todd and I walked out to his car. Here, Johnny, use my car. You know where to go. Out to the lab? Yes. You still haven't told me what happened to Leon Salkoff. Because I don't know exactly. Dr. Allworth called me from the nearest phone down there, told me Salkoff is gone, and that he's sure he was murdered. Have you dragged the police in on this? No, but I telephoned the FBI in Washington. They've promised to send a man. Well, do they know I'm here? They might not want any interference. Well, I told them about your investigation down there at the lab, and they said to give you a free hand. All right, good. Well, I'd better get going. Johnny, let me know what you find out. Once again, I headed south on Route 41, down through Fort Myers, where I swung left on 82 and on into the heart of the Everglades. I found the old wagon trail leading into the swampy jungle and finally came to the shack of the Indian, Ben Osceola. There, I hopped aboard one of his airboats, one of those strange little contraptions driven by an airplane-type propeller. Fifty minutes later, I pulled up at the brush-covered island in the middle of that vast, wet, soggy swamp. Dr. Allworth was standing in front of the well-hidden laboratory. Mr. Dollar! Mr. Dollar, I'm so glad you haven't left yet. Oh, what's happened out here, Doctor? Oh, it's been terrible. A, a terrible thing, like, like a nightmare. Uh, here, come inside. I'll show you and tell you everything I know. Oh... Our 
living quarters are down this corridor. Yeah, I remember. After you and Mr. Schwamm left us yesterday, Leon and I went to work immediately to replace the rocket fuel additive we had lost in the accident you investigated. Yes? Oh, if only I'd paid attention when he told me about the man he'd seen in Fort Myers the day before. But we were so busy. Wait a minute, what man? Someone he'd known in Europe during the war. A man he suspected of now working for... Well, for those who'd like to sabotage our... Go on, Doctor. Look, Mr. Dollar, this is my room. And this, right next to it, is Leon's room. Great Scott. Yes, there must have been a terrible struggle. And, Doctor, this looks like blood on the floor. Now, what happened? Well, it was early this morning before dawn. I heard voices in here. At first, I thought Leon was shouting in his sleep. Yes. But then he began to call for help, and I heard the furniture being knocked about. Well, didn't you come in here? Something had been shoved against my door. This table. I couldn't open it. Then I heard the shot. I heard Leon scream with pain. Then another shot. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Come on, Doc. Then I heard them drag poor Leon's body away outside. But how did you get out of your room? By by placing my bed as you see it now, I was able to brace my feet against it, force the table away from my door. <laughs> now, come, Mr. Dollar. All right. I pursued them down this hall, but by the time I reached the outside door, they were gone. But unless they had an airboat. They must have, hidden somewhere on the edge of this little island. Oh, there are a thousand places in the brush and trees where it could have been hidden. Do you see? Look, a thousand places. I don't see Leon's airboat out here, only yours. They took it. That's why I think there was more than one of them. And now I must leave you. You what? I must go into a telephone. I'll be back as soon as possible. Well, now, look, wait a minute. <laughs> Dr. Olwyn. Now that you're here in charge, I must telephone the FBI. No, no, wait. They've already been notified, Mike. Well, I'll be darned if I'm going to chase him. What's more, I doubt if I could have caught him in the old airboat that I had. So, all right, it would give me a chance to look around alone. Sometimes that's the best way. I poked around outside for a while, looking for where Leon's attackers might have concealed the boat they'd used. In that swamp and brush, it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Then I walked back to the laboratory building. The front door was closed. Funny. I thought we'd left it open a minute ago. Oh, well. Huh? Oh, no, you don't... Oh! Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Salkoff sequel matter. I don't know how long I was out after the attack on me at the hidden laboratory in the Everglades. But when I came to, I was lying in Alwa's bed. Across the room at a desk sat a well-dressed man going through files of papers and folders. I played possum because I wanted time to think. If Leon Salkoff had been murdered by subversives, then this man must be one of them. But how had he got here without Alworth knowing? Or did Alworth know? After all, now that I had time to think about it, his explanation of what had happened to Salkoff had been pretty glib. And the doctor's sudden departure a while ago to phone the FBI, he'd said. Didn't he know that Todd Swam had called him? In any event, he'd run off to leave me alone like a sitting duck. Who was the man sitting here? And why hadn't he killed me when he had the chance? And I rolled over and groaned. My head felt like it was split down the middle. Oh. Well, Mr. Dollar, you finally come around. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, brother. We were quite concerned about you. We... I'm terribly sorry about what we did to you, but until we frisked you and discovered your identity... Who are you? Walter Bremen, FBI. Oh. When we found you prowling around, we thought you might be one of the people we hope to trap here. The killer of Leon Salkoff? Salkoff is not dead, Mr. Dollar. What? Have you forgotten a case here in Florida that you handled last year? Harley Barron. Yes, another scientist who apparently disappeared. Actually, we had arranged the whole thing so that his whereabouts would not be known while he continued with his nuclear research. Yeah, I remember. The report of his death and disappearance was to throw off our pals behind the Iron Curtain. Precisely. So now you've done the same thing? Ouch. Again, I'm sorry, Dollar. But we didn't know who you were. We didn't want to take any chances. You say we, Mr. Brenman. My colleague, Mike Crucian, who is in searching the laboratory. Oh, for what? There are two groups... Agents from behind the Iron Curtain who would like to get to Leon Salkoff, either to gain the secrets he's learned in this laboratory or to get rid of him because of his help to this country's defense and missile programs. So if he's reported dead, each will think the other did it and they'll stop chasing him. Exactly. 
We had to act fast because Leon has already spotted some of his ex, uh, pals, as you call them, in this general area. Does Dr. Allworth know this whole thing was rigged? No, and you mustn't tell him. He's a great scientist, but, uh, well, he might let the cat out of the bag. Stall him, Dollar. Stall for time. Drag out your pretended investigation. It'll delay all worth bringing in the police, that sort of thing, until we can take care of Salkoff. That is, install him in his new place. Well, maybe I'm a little muddled because of this wallop on the head, but I should think you'd tell everybody you can, you know, to make sure his so-called death is publicized. Make sure these people who are after him will get the word. Don't worry, they know. I'd stake my life on it. And needless to say, if any of them come out here, we'll be ready for them. Oh, Michael, what did you find? Nothing. Not a single so... Oh, I see Mr. Dollar's come, too. Yeah, almost. Say, I'm sorry about the way I slugged you, Dollar. Yeah, me too. I'm sure Walter told you why. You find anything in here, Walt? No. I'm afraid we'll have to go back. Oh, uh, Dollar. Yeah? I take it Dr. Allworth is in on one of his usual all-day trips for supplies? Yeah, yeah, something like that. We've got to leave you for a while. You have your gun. You know what to do if anyone suspicious comes around. Well, now, look. When the doctor comes back, I'll have to tell him you've been here. Fine. And that we'll be back. Well, yes. We'll unless... be back. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, Dollar, we'll, we'll see you later, huh? Now, you rest. You need it. You're not kidding. Come along, Mike. <laughs> I felt so rocky, I didn't quite know what to make of it. I heard them leave by the outer door. Then a couple of minutes later, from off at one side, I heard their airboat leave. Well, wait a minute. It wasn't going out by the channel I'd been given to understand was the only way out of this place. Strange. Painfully, I rose and walked out. My head ached so much, I could hardly think straight. But there was something wrong here. Oh, sure, they'd left me a gun, but... Yeah... They left it with me, all right, but the chambers had been emptied. My airboat was still where I'd parked it in front of the building, too. Yeah, but I wouldn't start. Tamper with, maybe. Then I heard it, another boat coming into the regular channel. In the distance, I could see there were two people in it. Quickly, I crouched behind a clump of brush until I saw who the two men were. Mac! McLaughlin! Oh, hi, Dollar! Doctor always said you were out here. Mr. McLaughlin was already on his way when I telephoned. Why didn't you tell me the FBI had already been sent for, Mr. Dollar? I tried to, but you Good took off Lord, with such a Lord, Johnny, hurry. what happened to you? Oh, a couple of your own boys did this, Mac. What? Men from the Bureau? That's what they said. And I was so addled from this knock on the head. Johnny, that's I... impossible. What do they look like? What are their names? Walter Brenman, for one. Brenman, 5'11", sparse gray hair, blue eyes, about 150 pounds, mark of spectacles on his nose. Perfect description. And the other? Michael Crucian. Heavy set, maybe 5'6", about 200 pounds. Right. Small scar above the right eye, heavy, almost gravelly voice. Yeah. Brenman and Crucian, huh? So they said. We're in trouble, Johnny. What? Unless I'm completely cockeyed, those are the boys who kidnapped and probably killed Leon Selkoff. Mac. We've been waiting a long time to catch up with them. Their real names are Brenmanov and Krushinsky, spies and killers from, well, you know where. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Salkoff sequel matter. <laughs> McLaughlin, my old friend of the FBI, gave Dr. Allworth a gun with instructions to lock himself into his lab and shoot on sight anybody who set foot on the island before we got back. Then we took off in the airboats. Briefly as possible, I told Mac what had happened to me at the laboratory there in the middle of the Everglades. Only a pair like Brenmanoff and Krushensky would have the guts to impersonate FBI agents. After that beating, I was too muddled to even ask for their credentials. What I don't understand, Mac, is why they didn't kill me. They haven't yet learned the formula, that missile fuel. So? They've got to leave every possible door open, Johnny. With you convinced that they're from the Bureau... So they think. Yeah. Well, it meant they could go back to the lab. After the doctor returned, maybe even get your help in obtaining the formula from him. What? Sure. The abduction of Leon Salkoff would indicate the doctor himself is in danger. Well, that's true. But if he wanted his work carried on, if anything should happen to him... Well, who better to give the formula to than agents of the FBI? On the way out to the lab, he was ready to give it to me. Hey, Mac, he and Kay's little visit there prowling through the lab and all his papers 
It means they didn't get the formula from Leon Salkoff. Which probably explains their sudden departure. They couldn't find the formula at the lab, so they'll go back and put the pressure on Leon again. Makes sense, Mac. And I sure hope he's still alive. But where? Well, let's hope an all-points bulletin will help us catch up with them when they leave this swamp. Got to come out of it somewhere. They've had a big head start on us. Yeah, but this channel we're taking is the most direct route to the highway. Any highway. They carried off their pose pretty well. They even knew about that Parley Baron matter I handled with you boys. Well, why not? You broadcast the whole thing on your radio show. You gave me clearance. Sure. But just keep mum about this affair, huh? Until after the boys on the East Coast launch a space satellite successfully. Don't worry. A few minutes later, we pulled up at Ben Osceola's shack at the head of the bayou where we'd left our car. Well, use mine, Johnny. It's better equipped than yours for whatever we may run into. I saw what he meant, because in back of the seat was a regular arsenal. As we tore out of the jungle and headed south on Highway 29, Max shortwaved in all points okay, to every town okay, in the area and to the state police. Keep me posted. Over. We're heading south, Johnny, because you said that's the way they left the island by airboat. Right, Mac. But with the way those rivers and bayous twist around in the swamp, they could come out anywhere. Well, I know this country pretty well. They'd almost have to go south to hit this or any other highway. Now, you keep your eye peeled for any side roads that might lead into where they could land their boat, will you? Hey, look, what about this car that's coming at us? Man, he's really stepping on it. That's okay, Johnny. It's a police car. Police, huh? Sure. Sure. But did you see who was driving it and who was sitting beside him? What? Yeah, Krushensky and our old pal Brenman. Hold on to your hat. They must have heard the all points. Well, if they didn't, they're hearing it now in that car. And if that thing is souped up like most police Don't cars... worry, boy. They won't get away from this old boiler. Mac wasn't kidding. How we held the road at over 100 miles an hour, I'll never know. Thanks to the siren on the stolen police car, the road ahead was kept clear. They must have recognized me, though, when we passed. When we finally started to pull up on them, they fired the first shot. I can't weave at this speed, Johnny. Stay down low. I've loaded this gun from the stuff in the back. Watch. Put that lemon squeezer away. Grab the Tommy gun and back in the seat. Right. You got it? I got it. All right, Mac, keep your hands on the wheel. Those boys can really shoot. I told you, the killers. I let them have it. Right. Aim for the tires, Johnny. Aim for the tires. Hold it. Hold it. You've got them. They're going off the road. Mac, if they hit that row of cypress trees, they're gone. They're... Yeah, they are. Leon Selkoff? Well, I'm afraid he gave more than his skill and efforts to the country he loved that had taken him under its wing. His body was found trussed up and floating face down in the bayou from which Brenmanoff and Krushensky had launched the airboat. Dr. Alworth, well, now that a U.S. space satellite is carrying out its mission, he's safely and officially working in a government laboratory. Expense account total, including incidentals and the trip back to Hartford? Ah, oh, forget it. If in any way it helped to get the explorer out in space, in orbit, it's on me. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a trip to a mining town out near Denver, Colorado. And for me, it's a little too close to the wild, wild west. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Herb Ellis, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, Jack Crucian, Lou Merrill, and Stacey Harris. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>